A handful of nuts a day cuts the risk of a wide range of diseases. A large analysis of current research shows that people who eat at least 20 grams of nuts a day have a lower risk of heart disease, cancer and other diseases. The analysis of all current studies on nut consumption and disease risk has revealed that 20 grams a day, equivalent to a handful, can cut people's risk of coronary heart disease by nearly 30%, their risk of cancer by 15%, and their risk of premature death by 22%. An average of at least 20 grams of nut consumption was also associated with a reduced risk of dying from respiratory disease by about a half, and diabetes by nearly 40%, although the researchers note that there is less data about these diseases in relation to nut consumption. The study, led by researchers from Imperial College London and the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, is published in the journal BMC Medicine. The research team analyzed 29 published studies from around the world that involved up to 819,000 participants, including more than 12,000 cases of coronary heart disease, 9,000 cases of stroke, 18,000 cases of cardiovascular disease and cancer, and more than 85,000 deaths. While there was some variation between the populations that were studied, such as between men and women, people living in different regions, or people with different risk factors, the researchers found that nut consumption was associated with a reduction in disease risk across most of them. Study co-author Dog Finan from the School of Public Health at Imperial said, In nutritional studies, so far much of the research has been on the big killers such as heart diseases, stroke and cancer, but now we're starting to see data for other diseases. We found a consistent reduction in risk across many different diseases, which is a strong indication that there is a real underlying relationship between nut consumption and different health outcomes. It's quite a substantial effect for such a small amount of food. The study included all kinds of tree nuts, such as hazelnuts and walnuts, and also peanuts, which are actually legumes. The results were in general similar whether total nut intake, tree nuts or peanuts were analyzed. What makes nuts so potentially beneficial, sit on, is their nutritional value. Nuts and peanuts are high in fiber, magnesium, and polyunsaturated fats, nutrients that are beneficial for cutting cardiovascular disease risk and which can reduce cholesterol levels. Some nuts, particularly walnuts and pecan nuts are also high in antioxidants, which can fight oxidative stress and possibly reduce cancer risk. Even though nuts are quite high in fat, they are also high in fiber and protein, and there is some evidence that suggests nuts might actually reduce your risk of obesity over time. The study also found that if people consumed on average more than 20 grams of nuts per day, there was little evidence of further improvement in health outcomes. The team are now analyzing large published data sets for the effects of other recommended food groups, including fruits and vegetables, on a wider range of diseases. Eating regular variety of nuts associated with lower risk of heart disease. People who regularly eat nuts, including peanuts, walnuts and tree nuts, have a lower risk of developing cardiovascular disease or coronary heart disease compared to people who never or almost never eat nuts, according to a study published today in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. The study is the largest to date looking at frequency of nut consumption in relation to incident cardiovascular disease. Recently, dietary recommendations have shifted toward diets including higher quantities of plant-based foods over animal-based foods, with most dietary patterns including nuts because of their association with reduced cardiovascular risk factors and unique nutritional composition. While many past studies focused on nut consumption as a whole, researchers in this study also looked at the association between specific types of nuts, peanut butter, peanuts, walnuts and tree nuts, with major cardiovascular events, peanuts were included even though they are actually a legume because they have a similar fatty acid and nutrient profile as other nuts. The study looked at over 210,000 people, including women from the Nurses Health Study and Nurses Health Study 2 and men from the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, with up to 32 years of follow-up. In all three groups, information about medical history, lifestyle and health conditions were collected via self-administered questionnaires every two years. The primary endpoint of the study was major cardiovascular disease, defined as a combined endpoint of myocardial infarction, stroke or fatal cardiovascular disease. Secondary endpoints were total coronary heart disease, defined as fatal or non-fatal myocardial infarction, and total stroke, which included all fatal and non-fatal strokes. 
researchers documented 14,136 cardiovascular disease cases, including 8,390 coronary heart disease cases and 5,910 stroke cases. The study found a consistent inverse association between total nut consumption and total cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease. Also, after looking at individual nut consumption, eating walnuts one or more times per week was associated with a 19% lower risk of cardiovascular disease and 21% lower risk of coronary heart disease. Participants who ate peanuts or tree nuts two or more times per week had a 13% and 15% lower risk of cardiovascular disease, respectively, and a 15% and 23% lower risk of coronary heart disease, respectively, compared to those who never consumed nuts. Participants who consumed five or more servings of nuts a week had a 14% lower risk of cardiovascular disease and a 20% lower risk of coronary heart disease than participants who never or almost never consumed nuts. The results were similar when accounting for consumption of tree nuts, peanuts and walnuts individually. Researchers found no evidence of an association between total nut consumption and risk of stroke, but eating peanuts and walnuts was inversely associated with the risk of stroke peanut butter and tree nuts were not associated with stroke risk. Our findings support recommendations of increasing the intake of a variety of nuts, as part of healthy dietary patterns, to reduce the risk of chronic disease in the general populations, said Marta Guash Ferre, Ph.D., lead author of the study and research fellow at the Department of Nutrition at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Several limitations were noted in the study, including that the sample size was limited to white health professionals. However, the researchers note that the results can be generalized to men and women of different ethnicities because there is no reason to expect the underlying mechanisms to be different. Also, because the nut intake was self-reported, errors are inevitable, and there was not data on how the nuts were prepared, so the influence of preparation methods was not able to be tested. In an accompanying editorial comment, Emilio Raz, MD, PhD, of the Endocrinology and Nutrition Service at the Hospital Clinic in Barcelona and investigator of CIPREP, a research network of Instituto de Salud Carlos III, Spain, confirmed that the consistency of the findings strongly suggests an association between nut consumption and heart disease protection, but there is more to research. Ideally, further investigations should test the effects of long-term consumption of nuts supplemented into the usual diet on heart cardiometabolic events, Ross said. In the meantime, raw nuts, if possible unpeeled and otherwise unprocessed, may be considered as natural health capsules that can be easily incorporated into any heart protective diet to further cardiovascular well-being and promote healthy aging. Mushrooms are full of antioxidants that may have anti-aging potential. Mushrooms may contain unusually high amounts of two antioxidants that some scientists suggest could help fight aging and bolster health according to a team of Penn State researchers. In a study, researchers found that mushrooms have high amounts of the ergothionine and glutathione, both important antioxidants, said Robert B. Elman, professor emeritus of food science and director of the Penn State Center for Plant and Mushroom Products for Health. He added that the researchers also found that the amounts of the two compounds varied greatly between mushroom species. What we found is that, without a doubt, Mushrooms are highest dietary source of these two antioxidants taken together, and that some types are really packed with both of them, said Bielman. Bielman said that when the body uses food to produce energy, it also causes oxidative stress because some free radicals are produced. Free radicals are oxygen atoms with unpaired electrons that could cause damage to cells, proteins and even DNA as these highly reactive atoms travel through the body seeking to pair up with other electrons. Replenishing antioxidants in the body, then, may help protect against this oxidative stress. There's a theory, the free radical theory of aging, that's been around for a long time that says when we oxidize our food to produce energy there's a number of free radicals that are produced that are side products of that action and many of these are quite toxic, said Bielman. The body has mechanisms to control most of them, including ergothionine and glutathione, but eventually enough accrue to cause damage which has been associated with many of the diseases of aging, like cancer, coronary heart disease and Alzheimer's. According to the researchers, who report their findings in a recent issue of Food Chemistry, the amounts of ergothionine and glutathione in mushrooms vary by species with the porcini species, a wild variety, 
containing the highest amount of the two compounds among the 13 species tested. We found that the porcini has the highest, by far, of any we tested, said Bielman. This species is really popular in Italy where searching for it has become a national pastime. The more common mushroom types, like the white button, had less of the antioxidants, but had higher amounts than most other foods, Bielman said. The amount of ergothionine and glutathione also appear to be correlated in mushrooms, the researcher said. Mushrooms that are high in glutathione are also high in ergothionine, for example, cooking mushrooms does not seem to significantly affect the compounds, Bielman said. Ergothionine are very heat stable, said Bielman. Bielman said that future research may look at any role that ergothionine and glutathione have in decreasing the likelihood of neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. It's preliminary, but you can see that countries that have more ergothionine in their diets, countries like France and Italy, also have lower incidence of neurodegenerative diseases, while people in countries like the United States, which has low amounts of ergothionine in the diet, have a higher probability of diseases like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's, said Bielman. Now, whether that's just a correlation or causative, we don't know. But, it's something to look into, especially because the difference between the countries with low rates of neurodegenerative diseases is about 3 mg per day, which is about 5 button mushrooms each day.